Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match between Lick3, also known as Liquid Man, and Vicarin. I am Shadow Fury 33, your host, and starting out, we see that Liquid Man is going for Vekir, and Vicarin is. Now you're choosing his race. He is going for. Oh, okay, so both players are apparently going for Vekir. Interesting. So, Liquid Man immediately setting out his Teth and Shinvir. Shinvir going straight towards Vicarin's main base, and the Tethvir going towards the side base. While well, Zionvir, of course, just builds up the 6 RPs, as usual. This is on Hills version 1.5.0, by the way. This is a slightly older version of Hills, but that's what the players wanted to play on. So, Vikran is also building up. He has his Shin and Tethvir both going towards Liquid Man's natural expansion, and then from there into the main base. So, not the players' starting units other than the Zionvirs will actually be encountered. Oh no, Zionvir for Vikran is going towards the rear expansion, so actually, Liquid Man will have completely uncontested... Well, basically, he'll be completely uncontested inside Vicarin's main base, while Vicarin is going to be slightly contested by the Zion Veer, but at that point, I don't think it'll matter. A Shin Veer, Teth Veer, I, well, should be a Zion Veer, I'm quite certain. Anyway, the Shin Veer is just about at Vicarin's base for Liquid Man, and the Teth Veer has arrived at the natural, seeing nothing, while... Vicarin's forces. His Shin and Tethbeer have both just arrived at the natural and will be going towards the main base. By the way, Vicarin is about half a minute behind Liquid Man. So Liquid Man is just about ready to get his Shinbeer in, and the Shinbeer has come into the base and will start attacking right away. So it is attacking the Annex Pit, not really worrying much about it, going back for the RPs, which are the juicy target, and is going to be attacking them. Liquid Man jumping back to the get the beginning of the attack, while Vicarin, by the way, has expanded to the back natural here, so he doesn't have to worry so much about his main base. While Liquid Man is investing heavily in his main base, has not expanded at all, and Vicarin's force is coming in at a 234 mark. Right when the foundation for the depot is being built, Liquid Man does not quite have enough LC for that depot to be built up yet, and Zion, you're coming in, trying to attack them. It will be able to, well... Oh, it's surviving from the foundation. Good thing you built that foundation there because it's going to allow the Zyngir to survive long enough to kill both his Shinvir and Tethvir, and that will leave Liquid Man with a perfectly well defended base while Vikran has now lost some Vir class units. So Vikran in a. Not really a tight. I mean, Vikran being Vikran, he's not in a tight spot. He's expanded quite a bit along the north side of the map, so his Zyngir is doing a great job just getting expansions up. The fact that his Shin and Tethvir are destroyed is not a huge deal. He knows. He does know what Liquid Man's up to, so he does not have to worry so much about what Liquid Man could possibly be doing, because he knows his Zion Veer is helping defend the base rather than going out around the back and the south side of the map, so Vigoran knows he has an economic advantage. Though, to be fair, it's more he has an advantage in terms of how long his bases will last rather than in terms of how much he'll actually stay alive. But the Zion Veer finishing off what forces are there, and at the same time, Shin Veer and... Now, Shinvir, sorry, is coming in to help defend Zyvir for Vikran coming in, and it is actually not going to be able to defend properly. Shinvir has slightly longer range than Zyvir, so that Shinvir is able to get a shot off before the Zyvir got in. Actually, not slightly longer, but double the range. Shinvir is basically the snipers of the Vir class units. And Zyvirs are more powerful against ground units, but they are not a particularly long ranged unit. So it's. In that matchup, it really comes to. If Zion Veer manages to get close to the Shin before the Shin Veer can get shots off, which usually isn't the case. Anyway, Teth Veer coming in along the natural expansion, getting destroyed, while the Teth Veer and Shin Veer for Vikarin are coming along towards the natural expansion from the south. By the way, this is at the 146 mark, this is when the attack initially happened. Both players have jumped back near the unplayable pass to re micro their attacks. Neither player has actually gone for vehicles yet. Both players are focused heavily on infantry. Liquid Man did get a depot. He's moving his foundation to the southeast. He's changing where his foundation will be built. But he was getting a depot in the northeast along around the present or so. So I'm just going to go to the present here. He does have a depot at the present, but that may change depending on... Well, depending on whether his... Zyvir stays alive long enough to build... No, he has he has the resources to do it, and Zyvir will be in position to fight off the Shinvir and Tethvir when they come in. So all that really matters now is whether he can actually hold this enough to get vehicles out, because once he gets vehicles out, he will have quite a bit of an advantage on Vikran. Vikran having an economic advantage in terms of how long his bases will last, but having no production or tech advantage at this point. Vikran is about a minute ahead of Liquid Man, and from his point of view, he is doing just fine. He does have a depot at the four minute mark, 
the Liquid Man will be able to take care of this Shin and Teth Veer, no problem. Still, Vikrana has an economic advantage and is expanding quite heavily on the north side of the map, probably building an aerial control center pretty soon too. And knowing Vikran, he's going to be building a steady stream of Shin Turchers and Teth Turchers until he hits critical mass and just wipes the floor with Liquid Man. So Liquid Man really has to just... He has to get his vehicles up, he has to get... Well, the anti-air units are favorite, although... Really, just getting his vehicles up in general would be, would be a good plan. He has the advantage for timing, though it's a small one. And he is not taking advantage of that from a meta-temporal perspective. And Vigrin is remicroing around to the back of the expansion, sorry, back in the main, dealing with the RPs in the back, and it's going to be difficult for Liquid Man to actually deal with this since at this point in time, Zionvir is not in position to deal with it. But no, Zionvir is coming around the back and is not close enough to a foundation to be healed, so he has to retreat a bit in order to be healed. Another Zionvir, however, is up to help deal with this, and the Tethvir is back at the base now, so Liquid Man is going to be able to defend no problem. And this is, of course, the point where Vikran was expanded to the north base. So Vikran actually getting a depot at the 304, 340 mark, ultimately. That is going to be difficult for Liquid Man to deal with. He does have his own depot up, but he's not yet building units. A Zion Beer coming back. Looks like he'll probably turn into a Zion Turcher. And just healing up at this point, not transforming into a vehicle yet. But the Ted Searcher and sorry, Teth Veer and Zion Veer coming in. And no, Zion Pulsar, interestingly enough, though not a good idea. However, Teth Pulsar coming in, which will also help, but he really would need about half a dozen of those to deal with what Vikran's gonna be planning on doing. And Zion Veer's coming in, which not two Zion Veers, Vikran chasing after the Shin Veer for Liquid Man, trying to go over to the north northwest base. And Vikran getting his aerial control center at the 430 mark. So he will have air units. But about five minute mark or so, and he has the resources for it. He has no other vehicles built yet. And of course, Zion Pulsers are no good against air, though Teth Pulsers are anti air units. Still, you do need a fair number of them in order to be effective. So, one of them will not cut it, I'm afraid. Liquid Man also getting a skip teleport on the Zion Pulsar at the 444 mark. We see, we've seen the Shin Beer. We do see now that Vikarin is going for a Shin Turcher at the 507 mark. So it is starting, he is beginning to get his critical mass going with one Shin Turcher, though Shin Turchers are fairly powerful. They are expensive, but they are fairly powerful, and Vikran has basically been saving his resources, only building RPs and as few Veers as possible to defend effectively. Both players have been... Really, their only real engagement was the Veer encounter quite some time ago. But, well, let's see, metatemporally about four minutes ago, but it was around the two minute to four minute mark. It was quite a long encounter they had going on there. And I would say that while Liquid Man did get a bit of a momentum advantage from it, it was rather slight, and honestly, Vikran was able to just use that as a distraction. I mean, Liquid Man won the battles, but Vikran has the economy advantage, and it's definitely going to have an easier time making this game his. However, Liquid Man is still making a valiant effort, pushing his Zion Pulsar towards the north side of the map to take care of the RPs that are already set up there. And here's that Shin Church I was talking about, Vigran, at the 613 mark. He does not have a Shin Church actually back there yet, interestingly enough. His Shin Church, let's see, the 548 mark, it is moving towards the natural expansion, and there is nothing there right now. And also, two Zion Gears coming in as well to the natural expansion that Liquid Man has not taken. He is not taking any expansions at this point. Liquid Man is completely working on a one base strategy, which historically does not work well in Akron, so I don't know what he has planned up his sleeve, what he's trying to do to take advantage of this. However, the Shin Turcher has taken out the Zion Pulsar, the Zion Beer inside, ejected, but destroyed within seconds. So that, like I said, Zion Pulsar is no good against this. Zion Turchers, however, aren't a bad idea. They aren't a great idea since Z Shin Turchers are still bombers, and they're detectors too, so Zion Turchers really have no advantage over them. However, Zion Turchers can at least hit air, so... No, it should be, really, should be Teth Balsers. There's, or Teth Churchers. There's really no reason to go for Zion Churchers at this point. Against Vikarin, I'm speaking more from experience. Liquid Man is a bit of a newer player. He hasn't played Vikarin much, so I'm not sure if he's aware of Vikarin's style with Vekir. But yes, Vikarin does this. Shin Churchers, Teth Churchers. That's what Vikarin does. He loves making a ton of those units. Now, if he is contested in the air, he will make Teth Halcyons, and he will make other ground units, but his first course of action is always going to be Shin, Shin Churchers and... Teth Churchers. Our Zion Churchers coming in around the back here, getting rid of the foundation that was built, that Vikran had built before, in the southwest base that really, I'm surprised Liquid 3 has not taken yet. Liquid Man is 
focusing on harassment a bit, but his harassment efforts unfortunately will be stymied by the fact that Vikran is attacking his main base in the past with his Shin Churches and, Zion and Test Churches. However, the Shin Churches are actually taking quite a bit of damage from the Zion Churches. They aren't attacking the Zion Churches as directly as they probably would like to. And the Zion Churches, however, not jumping back into the depot to repair. This is a very bad idea. Zion Churches, like all vehicles, can jump into depots in order to repair when they're damaged. The other option, of course, is once they've been destroyed, is to use the Veer class unit to become another vehicle. But it's just... It's cheaper and faster to just drop the vehicle into the depot. The only hard part is that, you know, you might not have control over the vehicle at the time. But since right now Liquid Man has enough orders available, he is looking at this point in time, and he does have the ability to do this, he... I'm just surprised he isn't taking advantage of that. He does, however, have Test Pulsers coming up, which is good. He does have a lot of Test Pulsers coming in, and it looks like Vigran has not changed from his strategy. He's still going for Shin Turchers and Test Turchers. He doesn't have a lot of QP, though. He's mostly getting a lot of LC, which is not especially useful for air units. Ted Searchers are less LC dependent, but he does need more anti-ground than anti-air since Liquid Man is going for a very ground-heavy strategy, especially with all these Teth Pulsers here. This is going to be big. So Liquid Man having a bunch of Teth Pulsers, I'm, I would be surprised if Vikarin did not deviate. Sorry. I would be surprised if Vikarin, yeah, did not deviate from his strategy. That would, that would be odd. I can't imagine why he would stay with air units at this point. Zion Pulsar, Zion Halcyons would be a great idea right now. He doesn't have Halcyon Tech, but he definitely has the resources for it. And, like I said, getting that would be a great idea right about now. And it looks like he is, in fact, doing that. He is getting Halcyon class vehicles. He's probably going to go for Zion Halcyons, I would guess. There is no real air threat coming from Liquid Man, so he has no reason to get Teth Halcyons. However, Teth Halcyons may still be his option because they are a popular option. If Liquid Man does decide to ship to air, then they'd be able to respond to it. But I... I don't imagine he'd be doing that unless he's doing out of habit. And Vikarin has a tendency to play fairly intelligently and fairly in the moment, so he's probably not going to be acting out of habit in this. Liquid Man getting auto defense, he does have the potential to build defense turrets, but not going for it. He is putting his Teth Pulsar up and attacking the Teth Veer, sorry, Teth Turcher, but the Teth Veer getting killed as it ejects. So there is no engagement going right now. Vikarin, he has, like I said, he's building more units, he's getting his Halcyon class, he has tons of resources in the bank, so he can easily build up a large army, and Zion Halcyons, here we go, just as I expected. So he's going for Zion Halcyons, pair of Zion Halcyons, this is the best option he has, because of course Teth, Teth Pulsers are great anti-air, but they aren't a match for Zion Halcyons, and also Zion Turchers are tough against any artillery units like Zion Pulses and Mars, specifically Zion Pulses and Mars, actually, and... Zion Halcyons are as strong as you expect them to be against Zion Turchers. So basically, Zion Turchers have not much of a shot either, unless he had large numbers. And Liquid Man does not have a particularly large army, especially not an anti ground army. Getting Teth Turchers of his own, which at this point is a little bit late, however, it may still help with the Shin Turcher, though the Teth Pulsers are sufficient. Vikarin, his Zion Halcyons are completed at the 1140 mark. Jumping back to the 1040 mark, jumping back a minute. He is getting Gate Tech, which is no surprise. I'm a bit surprised he didn't get it earlier. However, his lack of QP is probably the reason why he didn't. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't actually invested a lot in QP. I know he invests in LC because it allows him to expand and expand and expand, because, of course, RP's resource processors depend on Liquid Crystal to be built. Therefore, building Q, uh, Q Plasma resource processors is only worth it if you are explicitly going for tech or for chronoporting. So when you're doing it initially, getting a ton of Liquid Crystal resource processors is really the best option if you're going for mass expansion, which Vikarin always does. Vikarin, however, also point out he is taking Liquid Man's natural expansion that Liquid Man never bothered to exploit. And here are Zion Halcyon skipping into the base. However, one Zion Halcyon won't be enough to take care of all of this. He is able to take care of one of the Teth Pulsers, but he really needs to bring in both Zion Halcyons, actually, well, all four of them now. At the 12 minute mark, it looks like he has at least he has two more coming in and a Teth Halcyon as well, just in case. Not a bad idea. And Liquid Man has surrendered. Rather anticlimactic surrender, but at this point he really didn't have much of a chance, unfortunately. The Zion Halcyon is being quite powerful. I'm honestly, gotta say, I'm kind of impressed how how much Liquid Man is able to do with one base. But on the other hand, Vikran was floating hard. So, really, expansion is key in Akron. It really is key. So I hope you enjoyed that and was informative, and have a good night everybody.